and welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Man, it's been a while. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you might as well consider this season two at this point. <laughs> season two, Jeez. episode one. I mean, as you're seeing in the video version, at least a lot of things have changed, but things are also different with the audio version because there's more people here. For starters, Eric Moore is here as always. Hello. And we have a new co-host who's going to be here, I'm assuming almost every week, in 5J Gaming over there. Hey guys, what's up? If you ever hear me call him Chris, that's just because that's his first name, so <laughs> I, I get it all jumbled in my head. <laughs> yeah, uh, it happens. And then we also have a special guest this week. He has not been on in over a year. It's been way too long, my man. HMK. Oh yeah. How y'all doing today? Finally got that new video fixed today, huh? Oh yeah. Oh man, don't don't remind Whoopsies. me when you, like <laughs> you you look you look at your video and you're like, man, this is a great great video and then you find out one spec you're like meh and then you just gotta you know, take i was down, listening to it, it and i was like do i say something then, do i yeah. say something to him or does he know <laughs> is that when you take out the gas can pour it on there and just light your rig on fire basically <laughs> yeah all right <clears throat> we're just gonna get right into it uh things are gonna be a little bit different now in in season two of the podcast because i'm gonna be using a, <laughs> a timer <laughs> uh so we get through a lot more topics normally we used to only have like two to four topics now we have a lot more and we're not going to spend as much time on each one, despite there being more people, because that makes sense, right? Right. Basically, it means my babbling is going to stop <laughs> somehow. I believe it when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So our first topic, uh, we're actually going to be talking about the Switch Lite. That's right. We haven't had a podcast since that thing was announced. The Switch Lite. Uh, we also have uh, a revised Switch with better battery life. It's coming out next month. Now, I don't think they give us a date on that yet, have they? I think it's just going to appear when it appears. <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, the revised Switch? Yep. Yeah. I think it's, okay, so I think it's like August for most regions. Yeah, yeah August, but like, no, we're almost to August, and we still don't know. August. Oh, August yeah. August what? But <laughs> yeah, it's coming out September for the UK, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Switch Lite is September 20th. Um, so we have a date for that, but I don't know. I mean, I guess they don't consider this revision like right. a new launch, so it's just going to yeah. appear when it when it appears. Restocks right. happen. That's when they're gonna be coming in. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna phase out all the older models. And yeah. So, what are you guys thinking of uh, of the Switch Lite? I guess let's start there because that's like the the new system. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on it? Man, I'm honestly I was excited a little bit when it first got leaked or whatever, and then when I first saw the thing, I was like, okay, these colors are cool, I guess. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I need no price, two hundred bucks, not bad. I need to know battery life. As soon as I saw battery life, I'm sorry. My excitement level basically like plummeted, man. <laughs> because if I'm going to get a Switch Lite that strips down a lot of its features and only for an exchange of like 30 more minutes of battery life, and the fact that the revision Switch is coming out before the Lite and it comes with more features, it's not that you know much bigger, it's not that much more bulkier than the Switch Lite, and it comes with way more battery life, Honestly, I was reconsidering the Switch Lite, but now it's a hard pass for me. I mean, what well, made me to get it is if a special Zelda edition was coming out with Link's Awakening. Don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Because it does do release that. the same day, so I'm just saying. But they haven't announced anything Shadow yet. drop. <laughs> so, 5G, what are your thoughts on the Switch Lite? Yeah, I got to kind of echo what HMK is saying. I'm not super excited. I like the idea that they're finally bringing some color into the Switch models. We've just had the black, plain black Switch for forever with the colorful Joy-Cons. Having the actual unit be more colorful looks great. Um, you know, adding a little color to the buttons, if you can call white a color versus black. But, you know, it's, it's changing things up a little bit. So visually, that's kind of nice. I'd like to see different colors. Not wild about many of the launch colors, but I like the idea they're going for. But having no TV output is a hard sell for me. Uh, now that I'm used to this system that I can put in its little toaster and I can be playing it on my TV or streaming it, you know, doing a lot of live streaming. So being able to play a game and then, all right, guys, I'm leaving the stream and then I just pick it up and I keep playing after the stream's over. Well, it doesn't really work. So maybe is a, a secondary thing. You know, I do have five different 3DSs, but I'm not going to go rushing to the store on launch day to pick up one. Sure. I mean, and, and for me, I was never excited about the prospect of this system a year ago when it was being rumored. Right. Uh, but I've kind of come around to what the system is because I kind of realized, 
of all of us here, I don't think this is for us at all. Um, no. We own no. Switches, for starters, so why would we pick up a slightly smaller, technically worse version? If we're going to pick up right. one, we're going to get the one that has better mm-hmm. battery life, that has everything else. Uh, mm-hmm. And obviously, all of us, uh, well, maybe not Eric. Eric plays a lot in handheld. Uh, but all of us put it on TV. We stream. We do stuff like that. Um, videos and stuff. So right. I think for us that we see a lot more value in it that way. Plus, I like playing on my TV. I just do. I also like taking it with me, and I can't do that with light. Uh, but it's only two hundred dollars, and that is yeah. the new 3DS price point. Yep, I was gonna say. And it's... they don't make 3DS games anymore, so nope. I kind of think this is just the 3DS replacement. And mm-hmm. if, when I view it like that, I'm like, holy crud! 3DS owners are getting a massive boost here. They're going for 3DS to. 240p gaming to 720 that's a huge jump for them mm-hmm. right so yeah. it's not for me but for people who own 3ds looking for the next thing i think this is exactly who it's for yeah it has all these cut yeah, features for parents yeah. you know buying their kids systems yeah, for kids but they're yeah. not gonna like like oh, all these cut features they're not even gonna be thinking about that when they're gaming mm-hmm. right so i mean besides a couple of the games that you know you have to have joy cons for but even then okay well the chances of parents buying those games are pretty slim i think mario party's the one that right i don't know why that doesn't support traditional controls i played it there's no excuse it doesn't need <laughs> the motion controls it doesn't i haven't played it so it I doesn't make the game better yeah mm. no and, it really doesn't i and, thought it was, just fun. it was fun though yeah it, it, it's a really fun game but it's like okay everything i'm doing with the motion I'm like why isn't this a button press like why yeah. can we not have yeah. that option like there's been right. a, every mario party game forever <laughs> Right. Basically the same question we were asking halfway through the Wii's console life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, I can understand, you know, like, 1-2 Switch. That's built specifically around the Joy-Cons. Right. Right. Or, or like, Labo or something. But right. Mario Party doesn't need to be that way. So maybe they'll patch it. Because yeah. I think that is one game that parents might buy by mistake for a life. Mm-hmm. If they haven't patched it already, I mean, it's not that recent anymore. No, and it sold a lot. It's almost at like 7 million copies sold. Oh. Like they, hey, they should patch it, especially since I assume it'll be on sale this holiday. Um, and speak of a game that should be like a target for DLC, how easy would it be to put out, you know, 20 new mini games? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they should be patching it. <laughs> or <Why not? clears throat> actually let us play Mario Party Online. Um, <laughs> and there is that. That's my biggest complaint more than like yeah. more mini games and more maps is, uh, hey, you added online finally. We've been asking for this forever, but it's not really online not really right. oh a no. handful of mini okay that's not what we care about we want to play mario party why can i play Catan <laughs> online on my switch i can play monopoly online yeah. on my switch with my friends but uno. i can't play mario i can play uno online yeah. with my friends but i can't uh. play nintendo's own board game s yeah. game that doesn't make any sense i, yeah. I think nintendo i can do the amiibo festival back on wii Jeez. u online so <laughs> with oh, friends man, yeah. and i can message them and chat with them locally Okay. Anyways, all right. Um, so back to the Switch Mini. Yeah. So what Engined. are you? What are you thinking? Eric, yeah. Right. About the Switch Lite. Um. I heard of this. Yeah. Sorry. Switch Mini. God. I'm still. I'm still in that mode. Switch Lite. Um, Same difference. Yeah. Right. Uh. Do we? Do we know for sure that for sure it does not have the capability of video out? Because I know you yes. can't. I Nintendo know you can't said there dock is no it. Video out signal. And held only. Okay. Because I was like, what about those third party nope. plug docks? USB C port does not have. Quote. Yeah. Video out. Okay. So, so it, it said it was also only capable of 720p. So even if it had video out, it you would wouldn't just want to have handle, some of those games on your video, big yeah. screen. Because yeah. like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had okay. like the worst resolution. Yeah, and you don't get the GPU. Oh, or dude, don't even remind me about that, <laughs> yo. I oh, was boy. like, man, I could play some Xenoblade <laughs> right now. And I put on my Switch, I'm like, never again. And handheld Imagine looks okay. handheld mode on oh, a 40-inch TV. It's like soggy toast on the Switch. <laughs> Oh, it's portable. It's so but, bad. I mean, I don't know. Right. Here's the thing. I debate sometimes whether in handheld mode, if it looks better than Xenoblade Chronicles ported to 3DS. Oh, I see. I mean, <laughs> the resolutions well, look pretty the- similar to me. <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles, the first game, was already like not that good looking of a right. game. Right. Well, yeah. So it was on a yeah. non HD system, so that's not. Surprising, yeah. But. Right, so, so now I'm gonna give it that. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, come on, it was running on 3ds. No one thought that was gonna happen, so that's really cool. But uh, right. impressive. But can we at least get 540p? 
like in handheld Nintendo? Is that? I mean, this is a first party, second party game, like 540p. Is that too much to ask? Yes. Slightly higher right. than standard def, please. Please, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely too much to ask. It's still a really good game, but man. Yeah, it is. Amazing game. I love that game so much. I, like Monolith Soft, I love you guys. You make amazing games, but can we like put some effort into the performance and the? <laughs> Like it's okay to cut back on people will accept no blades of grass if it's in 720p minimum and right. like actually a stable I don't 30 know. fps. Oh, have you seen those people complaining about the puddles of water when Spider-Man was being uh, promoted? <laughs> That's true. Well, and here's what I don't get to. Model of Soft works like Oh the yeah, how the water looks like gas. Oh, uh, gasoline yeah. or fuel or whatever. <laughs> well, they're saying oil. There you go. Yeah. Is it going to be fixed on PlayStation 5? Oh God! <laughs> um, no, well, my thing was was uh, Monolith Soft works with like the Zelda team all the time, mm-hmm. so like yeah. they didn't learn anything from the Breath of the Wild team. Like, hey, look, we have Blades of Grass, and we're still running pretty much in HD. So we have much a closer. bigger open world than you. Like your areas aren't actually as big as our giant open world. So right, yeah. But they also have more creatures, big creatures roaming. I don't know. It would yeah. just be, I think they just need a, a new engine. Whatever engine they're using, yeah. they just got it. It's time to upgrade. Time to get into something more capable. I think they're still using the engine they used back on the Wii. So, huh. yeah. I believe Maybe. it. So, so, in other words, Switch Lite, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think Switch Lite was ever for you. Bring it back. <laughs> was ever for you. Um, so, I get asked sometimes, like, because, you know, I bought my son a Switch for his birthday. I'm like, oh, do you regret it? Not getting him a light? Well, my son plays it on docked mode like crazy and even when he's in handheld what he does is he is the weird i've never seen anyone do this maybe this is just what kids do he'll take the joy cons off he'll put them in the grip and then he'll just set the the, the switch down on the couch so it can't even suck into air just terrible <laughs> and he'll just play it like that looking down at it he doesn't even care tabletop <laughs> mode got a kick set, doesn't care what <laughs> my daughter does the same thing the only one to have who problems. I think does it right <laughs> is my my littlest one, my little three year old. When he uses the switch, he just plays it in, in normal handheld mode. He just kicks back, lays down, holds it up, and plays. And I'm like, "That's how you're supposed to do it. What are you guys doing? If you want to use the grip, put it on the TV. At least put it up, like prop it up." You're right. You... Oh boy. I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of kids playing switch, but I'm gonna start paying more attention if they're just taking it off and setting it down and putting yeah. it in the grip. And it's like, okay, well, if that's what people want, then. I mean, at this point, they might, as well be gaming on, they might as well be gaming on their phone with a controller. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what that kind of experience is like at that point. Right. Hey, right. the well, Switch can do it all. Uh, honestly, though, that. wait, the Switch Lite doesn't have a kickstand, does it? Nope. No. Okay, so then nope. what are you supposed to do with, like, uh-huh. one, two Switch if you have to have uh, the extra Joy-Cons? You prop it up. Or you get the charging stand. Or, yeah, any one of the yeah, official the stands, stands out there. Okay. And yeah, Nintendo will say you buy okay. the charging stand because that props it up. Okay. Too. Because they have a portable charging stand, which gotcha. I've used one. It's actually kind of neat, but I mean, I'll just plug a cord in. It's okay. I don't need to spend 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to the next topic. We got some Joy-Con drift issues happening in the news. I don't know if you guys have heard. Or maybe you guys have, <laughs> have, have, have Do you guys have even experienced Joy-Con drift? Any of you guys? What are you talking about? It's recent. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh According to yeah. Nintendo, it's recent. What are you <laughs> talking about? Recent uh, issue. <laughs> so... I actually been experiencing Joy-Con drift uh, for a while now with my original two gray Joy-Cons from when I first got the thing. But I don't like it. Doesn't really affect me that much because one, I mostly play off a pro controller. Uh, but every time I have to play on like uh, on handheld mode, it, I feel the drift, especially when I'm playing Breath of the Wild. So every time I'm like Link is stop, I stop. Uh, moving with Link, he always like you know looks over to the left. I'm like, man, what are you doing? <laughs> and oh, uh, don't even get started on games like Smash Bros. That actually messes me up when I play on handhold. The very few times I play uh-huh. on handhold mode, but it hasn't been affecting me uh, lately because I've recently replaced my Joy Cons because I, I saw my great Joy Cons are charging on the charging station, but now I'm using my mo- new Mario Red Joy Cons a lot more frequently, which Sweet. they're you know on the newer they're on the newer side, so they're not drifting yet. But when they do, they're gonna. So electrical contact. I, yeah. Wait, second. Uh, if you if you lift up the little lip on, because uh, each of the joysticks has like a little rubber lip. If you lift it up and you yeah. spray some electrical contact cleaner in there and swish it around for like five minutes, it'll fix the drift problem for like the next Dope. six months. 
Yeah. It's, like only, it's only a temporary fix, but really what you should do is now Nintendo fixes a model warranty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But we'll get Free to that charge. in a moment, even though Nintendo's pretending this is recent and not a hardware issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know why? We all know why. <laughs> uh, uh, 5J, have you been experiencing Joy-Con Drift at all? Uh, only a little bit, and again, just with that original set, but I do play in handheld mode with that original set uh, from launch day, and if it ever does happen, I can usually fix it just by kind of hitting it the opposite direction, and it just kind of <laughs> corrects itself. It's very slight, doesn't happen all the time, um, so I, I'm not experiencing a, a very intense degree of it. So far, it isn't really interfering with my experience. We're not making the Switch sound very appetizing. Maybe you should get a light. Uh, <laughs> Eric, have you experienced any Joy-Con drift? No, no, actually, I haven't. I don't think I've played enough to experience Joy-Con drift. <laughs> my my, my uh, Joy-Con hasn't worn down enough, or the pad hasn't wor- contact pad hasn't worn down so enough. So I've, I've experienced Joy-Con drift on my left Joy-Con on my original blue yeah. set because at launch... I had the only. launch Joy-Cons, and then I bought blue ones at launch because, hello, Nintendo Prime, are the colors blue. <laughs> Why wouldn't I buy the blue ones? Uh, I don't even have the launch ones anymore. I think I sold them. Now, I kind of regret selling them now. but um, <laughs> So, yeah, I've experienced uh, Drift, and I, I did fix it uh, a couple times now with Electrical Contact Cleaner. Again, it's, not, it's more like a Band-Aid than a fix. It, it doesn't right. it's work forever. And eventually the, the contact pads, because we know because Spawn Wave tore, tore it apart and realized, uh, hey, they're using graphite. That's a very weak metal, and literally his Joy-Cons had grooves in it that where there shouldn't be grooves in the graphite pads. Well, I mean, the heck? you take a look at pencils. Oh. Hello, graphite. Yeah, yeah. I so mean, like, it's just a very cheap out thing on Nintendo and very poorly designed, and that's why it's happening. And it's been happening forever. If you go back on YouTube, you can find videos back in 2017 with 500,000 plus views of people talking about Joy-Con drift, how big an issue yeah. it is, and fixes for it, because... It's been going on since the launch units, and it's still been going on, and the problem has existed in every new pair of Joy-Con that have come out. Now, I have a theory, because Nintendo internally, apparently, an email went out at Nintendo of America internally to their support staff telling them, hey, look, um, if people call about Joy-Con Drift, just fix it. We don't care if it's in warranty. Don't ask for proof of purchase. Heck, if it's someone who had the issue happen before and we charged them for it, give them a refund, fix it again. Uh... Nintendo's basically admitting internally, hey, this is, uh, this is on us. We screwed up. This, this is basically Nintendo's way of doing a recall without doing a recall and panicking people over mm-hmm. the holidays. They have too many big games coming out for them to say anything publicly, I feel like, at this point. But um, that's Nintendo of America. Some people And, and I pl- tons of people on my channel have already said, hey, I called. Yeah, it's totally true. They're even covering shipping, which they don't always do. They're, they're, just, nice. they're just taking care of everyone, nice. um, including people that have, like, multiple Joy-Con. What they're doing is allowing them to make two different orders so they can always have a set of Joy-Con on them. They don't have to give up playing their Switch if they only play with Joy-Con. So, that is customer service. Yeah, Nintendo's doing, like, <laughs> now. In, in, in America, anyways, Nintendo is doing really well by customers because they have admitted internally it's their own fault. Now, that's good because it means they're going to redesign it at some point because they're going to keep losing money if they keep doing free repairs nonstop. <laughs> right. So they're, they're going to... It's not unusual either. Like PlayStation 4, you said the issue with the rubber breaking on the sticks. They fixed it. Uh, the launch switch uh, Joy Cons, the left Joy Con, the antenna ran the wrong direction, caused interference. Yeah. They fixed that. So they're going to fix this. I don't know if it'll be fixed this year, but I have a theory that it, Nintendo might have known about this for a while and it is going to be fixed, especially with the light coming out. So we That's have not had. So. When's the last time we had a new color pair of Joy Cons release? The last mm, Pokemon, yeah. It was there one after Pokemon? Smash. Although it wasn't really like color, that was just Smash. That was, yeah, that, that they was just, just announced design. actually the new ones. There's like purple and orange yep, and something. Those color. weird color combinations. <laughs> yeah. The ones that are so close <laughs> to being Waluigi and Wario <laughs> colors, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> what? What made so much sense for those to come up with with, uh, with Smash? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Mario Tennis, actually. Yeah. 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 Totally. Anyways. Anyways, they're really it's a really weird combo. I mean, I get that they're kind of Halloweenish colors, but like I would have paired them up differently and I would have also released like an orange set on its own, a purple set on its well, own. Anyways. No, no, no. Sure. no. They they yeah. would have released it with Smash so that way Waluigi is in Smash. Oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. No. The sticker on your grip. There he is. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I have a theory uh, cuz we basically haven't had new Joy-Cons at all this year. Until this upcoming October. And now we have the Switch Lite as well in, in September. New revised Switch next <clears> month. I wonder if Nintendo has known this whole time 
And so they stopped releasing new ones. Like, they could have did some from Mario Maker, could have did some from Yoshi, but they didn't. And I think it's because they knew about this issue, and they are working at manufacturing level to change it, and they didn't want to announce any new ones until they fixed it. Now, we, we'll know soon enough, because when they do come out, as I said, Spawn Wave, shout out to that guy, he does a lot of console teardowns. He'll actually tear it down and see if they actually fixed it, which they totally. better have for the light. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Oh the my gosh! If people got to send their entire system in for the light, that's going to be a problem. Right? That's going to be a lot. That's good. Well, people yeah. are gonna be mad. I'm just excited day. to see someone do the durability test for that thing. Oh yes! Can't wait for the thousand <laughs> foot drop from a drone. <laughs> yep. Right. Yes. Like, oh, the Joy-Con doesn't attach this time, so the Switch survived last time. Will it survive this time? <laughs> All one unit? Probably not. Spoiler. <laughs> Although someone will, someone will drop a brick on it and it'll survive or something. Oh yeah, I don't I, know. I want to see if it, I want to see how kid proof it is. I really right. do. You're right. Well, S- you, you, would you like me to uh, get one and then get my daughter really upset? She'll chuck it across the room. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if it can survive her, it can survive. Oh, God. <laughs> if it can dodge a wrench, it can dodge. Oh, wait. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, are we happy with how Nintendo's responded to this? Because it, this has been going on for two years. This isn't like even Nintendo. I know externally acts like it's, it's recent, but it's not well, recent. I mean, the fact that their tweet said recent yeah. issues, yeah, I'm not, I'm like, not but recent. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm not excited. I'm happy they're taking precautions, but I'm not happy that it took took them so long to do it and what it took for them to actually, you know, uh, bulk up and be like, okay, yeah, we gotta fix these things yeah you mean mainstream media are... actually covering it well that in a lawsuit yeah and they'll end up in the potential lot. lawsuit too well here's the thing yeah i don't know if that's the... all that's that's really what it took that's that, that part does not well here's the well. here's the thing i don't know if the lawsuit really played a role i say this because as i was looking up information on the issue in 2017 there was actually a lawsuit filed against nintendo about it in 2017 and it got mm-hmm. settled on a court so I don't know that the lawsuit really had much to do with it i think it had to do with kotaku put up that article uh. And there are zero articles about Joy-Con Drift on any major media outlet in 2017 or 2018. There's yeah, nothing. True. They didn't even talk about it. Yeah. It yeah. literally, nothing existed until Kotaku put up a piece. So the only people talking about it was the lawsuit filed in 2017 and then people on social media. Right. There was yeah. no actual, like, traditional news coverage. And the moment there was traditional news coverage, well, what happens? Every major media outlet's now reaching out to Nintendo and asking them. So they finally respond. Mm-hmm. Whereas... Us YouTubers reach out, they don't say anything. Oh, yeah. Nope. You're right. They just say, hey, go to support. Well, oh, okay, for what? Are you going to, I. what about my issue? Yeah, just you got to support drop down for account. that Joy Con drift. Mm-hmm. We're not the people to talk about that. Call support. It's like, uh, I mean, that's basically what they ended up saying, anyways, but at yes. least they had acknowledged it was an issue. Yeah. Um. So. Well, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't specify that exactly, though, either. Oh, that's true. They didn't specifically say. The drift issue. They no, just said Joy-Con well, issues. No, well, they were they. No, here's the thing. They were asked specifically about it, and they said it's a recent issue. So they were they were referenced in the initial response. Internally, mm-hmm. the internal email doesn't actually say Joy-Con drift, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like inferred. And everyone who's calling about it's getting it fixed in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So it's clearly about that. Mm-hmm. But it's got. I wonder if they'll fix all Joy-Con issues for free now. That would be nice. Interesting. I mean, they have to. Oh, at, at this point, you have to have have good faith with your consumers because there's a lot of people that have bought like seven pairs of them that have an issue with all seven, and they're just not happy. It's eighty bucks a pop. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <sighs> like, Yeesh. oh, we wanted all the colors, but then they don't work. So, yeah, right. Hmm. Um. All right. I guess we can uh, move on to the next topic, which is actually about a game. Holy cow! We haven't had a game topic in a little while. We're talking about Astral wow. Chain. Um. Unfortunately. I didn't get to play it at E3. That apparently they had a pl- behind closed door demo, and that's what all the information coming out now is from that demo. Oh, uh, lots of footage out there. It comes out August thirtieth. Um, every bit of coverage I've seen, every impression video, every bit of footage, everyone who's actually gone hands on has told me that this is a sleeper game of the year type of game. Like if you Ooh. love near Automata, you're going to love this. It's that and more. Ooh. They went like beyond what near did. And they made near, so like they, they they obviously ha, you know have that kind of experience, and apparently they went above and beyond in this one. And this is just in a little demo they got to play. This isn't even like the full game. Um, so I've been watching a lot of footage on it today, especially, and some things you learn about it is um, <laughs> it's not in HD, that's for sure. 
Ooh. Running the Xenoblade problem. Not, it's not quite as bad as Xenoblade. But uh, it's definitely not running at like 1080 for sure in dock mode. Uh, maybe it's hitting 720. I'm not, I'm, I'm not 100%. Digital Foundry doesn't know either because you know they couldn't hope. they couldn't put their tools to test on it. They're going to wait for the final version. But um, it the footage I saw, like I watched Digital Foundry's video, they it, it looked fine. So I, I think it's at 720. Um, and it's not 60 FPS. Uh, they targeted 30. Oh. Uh, which is going to disappoint some people, but apparently uh, they did that with Nier as well because it's a bigger, more open world, and so Platinum's pretty trying standard to, for Pla- Switch yeah, anyway. Pla- Platinum's trying to like mm-hmm. get away, I guess, from like the Bayonettas, where it's a more enclosed area, and that's why they can do 60 FPS. And they're trying to ex- expand out into these big, massive spaces, and that's why they're they dropped it even in Nier, and now they're going to drop it in this game. Uh, that that to me doesn't bother me as much because so many games on Switch are thirty anyways. I mean, Breath of the Wild well, thirty. And again, that's... as long as it can hold a consistent thirty, right? That's the yeah, thing. yeah. I, and we won't know till the final build. Some said, "Oh, we noticed a drop here and there," but it was like very like you know maybe from thirty to twenty eight or something. Which personally, I probably wouldn't have noticed that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I gotta say, setting aside the performance metrics, because again, these are not even close to final bills so, and platinum all has has platinum ever released a game in the end that wasn't fantastic let me legend of Korra. <laughs> oh there it is i knew you were so, someone was gonna bring up legend of Korra. like i'm like let me go into t- 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 and if people really 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 <laughs> really really want to get into it here we go star fox zero <laughs> yeah i'd say there's games that people didn't like like they really really didn't like them I don't know if it makes them objectively bad, but yeah, Star Fox Zero people were really not into. I I, yeah, I personally enjoyed. I it. liked Star Fox Zero. I didn't like the motion controls. I could they could have did away with that, and I would have felt it was better. But what was interesting about see, here's the thing: a lot of the faults with Star Fox Zero, I don't even think it's Platinum Games. I think it's Miyamoto. Miyamoto yeah, was mm-hmm. told. Oh, yeah. Miyamoto was told you need to make the Wii U gamepad matter, and he's like, okay. It's like way too late yeah. in the life cycle to even try yeah, to. That, that, that's what. That's not what we're arguing about. We're arguing <laughs> I know. About I know. Platinum I know. Platinum game. game. I know. Okay. <laughs> platinum game that Nintendo doesn't touch. <laughs> Anyways, no. Um. So I, I just I'm very impressed with this game. The entire combat system. Um. There's platforming, even though the character can't jump. It's just crazy, blowing my mind how that works. Um. The story apparently looks super in depth. Uh. Which. I guess a lot of platinum games don't always go super in depth with the story, but this is like all the side characters. There's like a whole town to explore. This, I can't not like. I know I, I like kind of already blew my gaming budget this year, but I feel like I'm picking this up. What What oh, are you guys same. thinking? I'm actually stupid excited for Astral Chain because you know the the guy who's the lead the game designer on Near Automata, he's the one who's directing this game. And Nier is, ooh, I love Nier. It's good. And I cannot wait for another game like this. And, you know, of course, it's being supervised by uh, Hideki Kamiya. And, you know, whenever he's involved, most of the time, you know, things come out great. And uh, I'm a sucker for these super, like, stylistic RPG type, you know, with, with, with a hint of collecting stuff. That's mm-hmm. why I love uh, Nier so much. But Astral Chain, uh, the, 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 the only thing that has me worried is that I'm not worried about the gameplay. I'm not worried about the release. I'm not worried about it, of what it could contain and stuff like that. It's just, am I the only one? Because at, when you were saying all the things about the graphics, like, oh, it's not going to hit 1080p. It's not going to be 60 FPS. It just looks very muddy to me. Like, I'm like, are you guys going to polish this up by the time of release? Because, <laughs> you know, it, it just looks, right. like, it, the style doesn't look bad. The designs don't look bad. It's just that, like, it, when it's in motion, I'm like, Yo, can I, like, am I wearing glasses? Do I have to wipe my lenses or something? <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just me. No, I, I'm I hear, super excited. You know, it. I hear you on that front. Uh, I, I, obviously, in an ideal world, I think all these games should, um, I, I'd love them to look better. I, I think what, what's interesting about this game is, like, when I played a little bit of Nier and then I go to this, I think in many regards this game looks better visually in some ways. Uh, and, I wonder if they pushed the aesthetic, they pushed the particle effects and the lighting to a point that this probably, or I guarantee, would have been better as like a PlayStation game versus a Switch game. But Nintendo's funding it, so it's a Switch game. <laughs> right. Um, I'll, I'll say this. At least it's releasing, unlike Scalebound. 
<laughs> True. <laughs> there is that. And here's the thing. I mean, even despite the muddiness, and HMK is not saying it's going to be a bad game. Of course not. He's got no doubts about it. It's like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. We can talk about how muddy it is. It's a fantastic game. It just kind of sucks that on the flip side, we got to deal with all this. Visuals could have been paired back to a point to make it more appealing, in my opinion, but... Or something. I don't know. Monolith Soft's a whole different story because they have access to the they've had access to the Switch for a long time, so Yeah. What do you think of 5J? Uh I never played near, so you know, I don't have some of that like emotional attachment to oh, it's like this game or it's the 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 head developer of that game, you know. So I, I don't have that coming with me. Um, it looks really cool. I'm a big fan of bloom lighting in games, you know, keep adding <laughs> more and more of that in there. Um, but this is just one of those games that, for whatever reason, I can't even quantify why I'm not all that interested. I can't pinpoint anything that, that to me, doesn't wrong. look yeah. interesting or, like, it's not going to be well done. Like, I don't even mind, like, I muddy think... graphics like the original Xenoblade. We bring up that game a lot in here, this podcast, but, you know, graphics aren't the end-all be-all, so the fact that it's not 1080p sure. crystal clear. Wouldn't stop, you, wouldn't deal, stop but... any of us from playing a Zelda game, so... <laughs> exactly exactly but yeah i can't put my finger on it but it's one of the games that i'm just i don't know if i'm ever going to get around to it i think some of it um because uh, there's a couple of videos i was watching um and, and i guess the general takeaway and what a lot of people are concerned with this game are kind of like what you're saying where everyone thinks the game looks good but nobody could really figure out what the game is from just watching right the way Nintendo's released coverage of it, the way Platinum has, even some of these previews, it's like, yeah, they're they're telling you the game is good. But they can't <laughs> get into exactly why, because a lot of it's a gameplay feel, like how it feels to play. Like you can't convey that without other people without it already being out. So everyone that's played it kind of has, oh yeah, yeah, we agree. That's that's what it feels like. Um and I think that's why we're seeing a lot of these comparisons by some hey, this is kinda of like Nier, because that's something people have played. So it's like, look, like right. if you play that that kind of sets the expectation for what this is. If you haven't played that, then you're probably still utterly confused because <laughs> they, yeah. they have done a very poor job marketing this game. This is the game. Yeah. Remember, Eric, remember when I said they were over-marketing Xenoblade Chronicles Oh, 2? yeah. I, I totally they need agree. to over-market this game. This is the game that needs yeah. that over-marketing because mm-hmm. it's a new IP and no one knows what the hell is going on. It's like a month to go. <clears throat> yeah, and no one knows what the hell is going on. This is game needs the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 marketing. We didn't need right. that. for That was the yeah. third game in the franchise. We didn't need that kind of marketing. We understood what Xenoblade Chronicles is about. Yeah. Uh, granted, there's a lot of people hype, but I'm like, dude, the, we're going on like 15-minute tirades in the middle of a Nintendo Direct. We don't need this. You're right. <laughs> Did, has there been any kind of expl- explanation of the story? Well, you're a cop. All? Okay. Um, You're a good cop supposedly although you're i I think there might be a twist in the game at some point because you enslave these like astral beings that's Mm -hmm. why they're chained to you so i'm not how that's morally all right but you're a good cop i don't yeah whatever but maybe it's to fight the bigger evil because there's a bigger evil going on people are going extinct like but it's all like these random like oh yeah people are going extinct and you got to defeat these things that are killing us and like you're solving crimes and it's like oh, oh okay yeah, I mean, you could be talking um, about La Noire at this point, like. But, but, <laughs> yeah, it, but there's no, really no known story aspect that we. Well, they've been very coy on the story. Um, yeah. the people that played the demo get they get to experience a lot of like what the world is like and talking mm-hmm. to characters and like yeah, there's going to be this crazy story, but they're not really telling us much, and I don't know. I mean, I don't remember knowing much about the Bayonetta games either before they came out story wise. And those stories ended up being pretty good. So yeah. maybe it's just a Platinum Games thing. But. Maybe. I don't, I'm just could trying be. to figure out why, you know. Because, yeah, it, it looks good. It looks like it could be, I mean, I, I mean, like it could the, be just, co- the concepts. There could just be Sakurai in it, where Sakurai doesn't like any story details ever being known when he does story in Smash. <laughs> and he gets mad when people stream it. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so from what I remember about, like, any type of, like, you know, lore or a story with Astro Change is, like, the, the, the big pre-dating story is that uh, something happened in the world where these astral things just co- start coming out of the floor, start coming out of our dimensions, and then they just start killing everybody. And then humanities are like, okay, we need to do something about these things. 
or humanity is going to get wiped out. And then that's when they develop the astral chains. Mm -hmm. And okay. then the technology allows them to capture these things if they ever decide to come out of their own dimension okay. and then use it against others. Mm -hmm. So then yeah, after right. that, society slowly but surely uh, worked its way back up after the invention of this thing. But now uh, the, 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 the little pre dating story is like, oh, you're using this kind of power enslaving these other beings and you don't know what you're dealing with. And then, you know, stuff hits the fan gotcha and that's okay. basically like okay. the, the pre-dating story to it yeah gotcha. isn't is like the a... city that you're in the, the the only city for humanity right now like everything yeah. else mm -hmm. is wiped out yeah yeah hmm. yeah so sounds like a standard monster movie but instead of just kill them it's like hey let's capture them and ride them Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well and I, I i honestly think there's gonna be a point in the story where like you finally figure out why were they destroying you and oh, yeah. Yeah. maybe they're actually maybe they're not all bad or maybe they are all bad i have no idea so like you don't feel bad about capturing and using them because they are all bad mm -hmm. but maybe or may maybe it's not even a capture maybe it's just a way that they have to be linked to you i have no idea we, yeah. don't, we don't know that's the thing we, yeah. we need more information I mean, on this game right a, a demo would be cool <laughs> yeah i would love a demo i would love a public you did it for demon Absolutely. x machina come on let's uh, let's go i i know in the, in the trailer that i just watched it was really cool to see that like the, the five different types with the with the blades, the yeah, bow, and, the, the, and, and you have the same five all the game. The fighter, yep. the dog, and the axe. And you that could was and you really could switch them out cool. mid fight. So like you can be in the middle of a combo, and then switch out to an archer, and then switch back. To, and, that, and like even then, people are like, "How does that work?" Because there's like hardly any gameplay of it anywhere. It's like <laughs> yeah, would have been cool to see people doing these advanced moves, and you're just not even showing it off, like not even on Treehouse. Like they uh, during E3, they didn't really do a good job. I. This, to me, is going to be one of those games that's going to be, like, everyone's going to review it as, like, a 9+, plus, but nobody's going to play it. All right, because mm. no And it's gonna really going to disappoint me. Because Platinum has kind of a reputation of they release these amazing games, but hardly anyone plays them. Um, and part of it is because they are hard to market sometimes. Uh, Bayonetta's mm. kind of gotten to a point where it's become easier and easier to market Bayonetta. Uh, well, that's because more, more, more established IP now yeah. and a female character, and she's all... Her personality is sexualized, which makes her being sexualized okay. And then everyone just kind of like freaks out and has conversations about it all the time. But it's a it's a known IP now. Um, whereas every time they release a new IP, it's kind of like, eh. Like, it looks cool. Like, when they showed a scale bomb, looks cool. Still don't know what it is. Something about <laughs> dragons. You ride them. You fight things. Cool. And that's all we ever got to know about that game. I'm still mad about that. Oh, I, yeah. I'm hoping it comes back at some point. I don't On the Switch. Oh, on Switch or next gen, like sure. you know, hit on Xbox, PlayStation. Let's go! Like, oh, that game! Oh, I was so excited for that. Anyways, all right. Um, we're talking about another game. Uh, this one has not come out at the time we were recording this podcast, unless you were lucky and it showed up early to your house from Amazon shipping or something. How about Fire Emblem Three Houses? Uh, so, the time you guys hear this, uh, you will already probably all of you guys probably listening have already played it. Because it's a pretty popular game. Although then again, not as popular as some of Nintendo's other IPs. I think the best selling. Game sold 2.86 million, and that was Fates, which was like they pokemon it with that game. So there was like two different versions. That um, was it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's man. not it. Like, everyone's like, oh, it's such a huge franchise. It's like, it sells like Kirby numbers. It's not that big. <laughs> but this is Switch. Every franchise that comes out on Switch that's established sells more copies on Switch than anything else. So, I mean, we could talk about sales, but I think... It, I, I want to kind of wait maybe till next week to talk about that because then we'll have launch figures and we'll have a, a grander idea. Hey, is this outperforming other games during launch? What are your guys' thoughts on Fire Emblem Three Houses? Like, are you even excited for it? It's a very different game. It feels like to me compared to normal Fire Emblem. Okay, so the thing with me and Fire Emblem is that I was never, I was never huge on Fire Emblem. And a lot of people take that the wrong way. It's like, oh, you don't like Fire Emblem? I never said that. It's just that I just, I just never piqued my interest that's it uh three houses definitely looks cool it looks big it looks gigantic oh, yeah. it's gonna be like 400 it's plus hours it's gonna be crazy oh yeah. man like i might just make this my first true complete fire emblem playthrough ever yeah what i, I always mean, tell I everyone enough go ahead if, if you haven't tried an ip and you're like oh i know it's good but i've just never felt it like I always try it once at least once yeah and if you're not don't get into it it's cool i mean it's fine it's not not every ip yeah. has to be for everyone but I mean, I, I've played Fire Emblem games before, but I mean, it just never really like hooked me and stuff. So I know how they play, I know what they're about, and I know enough lore to get get me by. So uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, you know, it looks re it looks really dope, and uh, it, but it looks like such a 
Like if if I if I were to really get down and dirty with it, I would not see the live day for like a month. Well, that's that, that's how Fire Emblem goes. Me. That that's Fire Emblem in a nutshell, right there. Yeah, but with but like with Fire Emblem Fates or Awakening, I can go outside with it. Well, you can go I, outside I mean, with I can, Switch. I could do that with the Switch. Yeah, I could go outside with the Switch. Okay, I don't know, maybe. So, yeah. Walk outside and you just burst into flames because you haven't seen natural light in in two right. months. <laughs> just find your favorite sitting tree, and that's where you sit at the play during the day. And then you're like, "Oh man, I've been outside too long today." And go back inside. <laughs> you play it on your TV. Um, uh, how about you, Fajay? How are you feeling on Fire Emblem Three Houses over there? Uh, it, you know, I still have the remnants of my initial impression from the three D, uh, the E three trailer which was really long and text heavy, Mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't a great showing of the game. So there's a, that kernel of me that still says, Oh, this is, this going to be too complicated and text heavy and boring, but all the trailers since then have been much, much better. You know, it's basically Harry Potter, uh, fire emblem. Um, so I, well, I can tell you right now, it's going to be a text heavy game. Fire Emblem's right. always and, and been text-heavy. the newer heavy. ones always, actually, they kind of always have yeah, been. They've been always been text-heavy. Yeah. It's a very story-driven experience. Uh, right. And in this in this case, like, you're literally um, a school teacher or something, uh, mm-hmm. and you walk around the school and you're talking to students and, like, that, that, that kind of stuff. Like, there's things, there's missions, and there's obviously times when you're yeah. doing the traditional Fire Emblem stuff, but I, I, I will warn you, that only makes up, like, a third of the game <laughs> is the actual right. combat stuff. So. Yeah, so I like and this that Fire Emblem keeps doing new things, you know. A lot of these ones, you have children in them, and yeah. now in this one, you've got a whole school. Yep. It's kind of like you doing the thing where these two pair off, and then they have a special uh, child that's like the combination of those two characters. It's like doing that without doing that again, you know? Yep. So I like that they're trying these new things. I like how huge it's getting. I don't know that it's going to be a game that I'll complete. It's a game that I am interested in getting. Sure. Um me, I was always more for the Advance Wars style of game than okay. uh, Fire Emblem, but I do still enjoy them. Have you played Tiny Metal? Yeah, I liked Tiny Metal, but the uh, the art style was was kind of getting <laughs> under my skin a little bit. Yeah, so there's a second one out, and I'm interested in the checking se- out the second that to one. Apparently, is even better. They, they, okay. the, the makers behind it have been contacting me because I reviewed the original one, and I was like, I don't know. Nice. I don't know if I want to dive back in. <laughs> Because uh, I, 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 I sunk a lot of hours. It's a trap. Style game. I sunk a lot of hours in the first Tiny Metal. It's uh, a trap. So Fire Emblem, um, you know, like you were talking about the text heaviness. It's I, I kind of liken it to like Mass Effect. Um, if you ever play that game, mm, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot of <laughs> combat and stuff, but like there's a lot of text. A lot. Yes. And a lot of decisions. And that's what this game is. There are so many different endings to Fire Emblem Three Houses that – it literally will take you 400 plus hours because you'll have to start over again, even with the same house and make different decisions along the way to get different outcomes. Um, wow. It <laughs> is it is crazy in depth. So yeah, there's a lot of text, but apparently they do a, a really good job mixing the text with cutscenes, mixing it with um, in-game engine kind of cutscenes or gameplay action. Uh, even the the combat and the battles all have significance on the, all, all the story elements. It's not just oh, go here and defeat this enemy. Yeah, you did it. Like no, there's story elements and who you choose to be in that <laughs> battle. Like I know it sounds really complex, but Fire Emblem always does a great job of slowly introducing all this stuff to you. So by the time time you get to all this really complex oh man if i send this person how's it affect their story or if i pair these two together out there are they gonna fall in love and have children when they get back and next you know they're pregnant babies what's going on like you'll by the time you understand that kind of stuff you will have a full understanding you'll be already like 40 hours into the game before you fully get it all like that's just (laughs) this game it grabs you in the beginning and it never like i I don't know specifically this one but fight in the past if you play it just grabs you and never lets go so like you might if I do, oh I might start it but not finish it, you will feel in like if you don't if you don't if you start it and don't finish at least one playthrough, it'll be because you just don't like the game, because it grips you with that story and makes you you gotta progress just to see what happens. I need to know what happens. I need to know how this character's storyline ends, how this ends, how my character's story like how does it end? I need to know. And then and then what sucks in this game is you get to the end and you realize oh that's not the only ending. So then you're like, do I want to go through all of it again to, for another one, for to see more endings? Um, do I? Or <laughs> I mean, well, and uh, what is cool is there's three houses. So in the beginning of the really? game, you choose you choose which cool. of the, yeah, I know you choose which of the three houses you want to be a teacher of, <laughs> and that changes the experience. So 
I think for three playthroughs, it'll feel kind of fresh because you could choose the three different pathways. But it's then, I don't know how many people are going to go back and replay a house just to see a different ending. Um, they yeah. might just YouTube it and see all the endings. Someone will 100% it out there and put it all. Man, up. you got to go through all the houses. And within those houses, you got to construct all different interlocking relationships with the students and the teachers. And the and you can recruit <laughs> students from other houses. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's a very complex game, but that's what's so fun. Nintendo doesn't have a lot of games like this. Most of their games I are pretty simplistic. Like so you're, you're right. You're going to have to start out with a matrix of characters and just draw lines. And Well, that's the thing. What, what's cool about... Most of the Fire Emblem games, and this one, it is true. Um, you don't have to play fire, prior Fire Emblem games. Like, there's not like. So yeah, to course, me, because, to mean, me, like, like kind of Zelda, like it's kind of like Zelda. This game, like, you don't have to play prior ones. You can have fun. You don't need to know any of the lore. Like, you can enjoy Breath of the Wild just as much. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to say that when we know all the lore. <laughs> but but, I, but like, there's people who Breath of the Wild was the very first Zelda game, and they love it, and they didn't get any of the lore references, and it doesn't matter to them. Right. Those poor bastards. <laughs> right, but <laughs> I mean, it's easy for me to say that because I know all the. Rep- but anyways, um, but it, it's like that where each game kind of stands on its own, and this this game is going to be standing on its own. And I think it's because Nintendo knows this is going to be a first entry for a lot of people because they haven't been on home consoles since I don't even know GameCube. Wii, Wii. I guess there was that Wii one, but I forgettable. One. It was a forgettable game. Yeah. I didn't like that one. I tried to pretend it didn't exist. <laughs> Just, just take it, it out here. Basically, the franchise there. was going to die, and then Awakening sold really well, so then it came back. Oh. Yeah. that That's basically what happened, and it's just been stuck on 3DS ever since, and now we're getting a home console, first HD entry. Um, a lot of people, I think, are going to pick this up for the first time. One, because it's also the, the technically the next you know, widely considered major release after Mario Maker, and then we don't have another major Nintendo game until what? Link's Awakening, which is a... A rem- I mean, we talk about Astral Chain, you can talk about Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but those aren't Nintendo games. No, really, no. Right. They're good games. We just mentioned, but that's but, almost Yeah, November. that's that's all October, and then Pokemon. So, like, we talk about how killer this lineup is, but a lot of the lineup that's killer this year isn't just Nintendo. It's that uh, there's a lot of really good games in between mm-hmm. uh, that people should, like, that's Astral good. Chain. They're getting their, their, their part support like this. Yes, getting a, a wider variety of content so it's not just Nintendo is awesome. Um, Wolfenstein Youngblood, by the way, comes out the same day as this game. I mean, no oh. one's no one's oh. really no one's really even talking about it. Kill a Kill comes out as well. Yeah. People aren't talking about this because mm. Fire Emblem's taking the spotlight, which happens yeah. with Nintendo games. It's like, hey, yeah. there's more than just that coming out. Like we just had Marvel Ultimate Alliance a week ago. Like, yeah, I know. I still got to pick that up. <sighs> Don't remind me. That's why it's not a topic. I know. I want I want to pick it up before yeah. I talk about it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we'll get into the uh, next topic, which is actually uh, going to be a recurring segment every week. Uh, what's nice about this recurring segment is it gives me an excuse to keep pestering Eric Hagel hey, play something. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, what have we been playing this week and why? Or this past, wh- whatever. For us, it doesn't need to be a week. It's been a while since we did a podcast. But um, 5G, we'll start with you. What have you been playing? Recently. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yet. Of course so you had a rock. Oh. So excited for that. Oh. Okay. No, I, I'll, of Marvel I'll talk story. about the game without getting into like story details or maybe like I won't necessarily bring up certain characters or like whatnot. Like Loki? <laughs> but I did it. it's one of those games where it's like simple, but there's depth to it if you're looking for it. Mm-hmm. You know, so like some characters might have more synergy with somebody specific than if you just chose random characters that you just happen to like. Mm-hmm. So um, and uh, there's, uh, you know, like leveling up um, aspects about certain abilities. But when you come down to it, it's just kind of a beat up brawler button mashing. You know, you got a light attack and a strong attack. And then it's all about these abilities and how they work together. Have you played any co-op yet? What? Have you played co-op yet? Yeah. So uh, on stream, actually, I had somebody join me for co-op and it's cool. Um, So you can do up to four players. You can, uh, if you don't have four, basically whoever the host is, you choose the team. And then each additional player that jumps in takes one of the slots from your team. Mm-hmm. So if you initially had these, you know, four favorite characters, one of them becomes uh, um, an, your co-player and they choose whoever they want. They don't have to be who you originally chose. But then it's still just four characters running around, uh, beating up everybody in sight. 
Uh, you can play the main story mode together. You can play some of the other modes. I don't hmm. you know, know what you do or don't want me to say here. So, I but yeah, essentially, okay. you yeah. can do all of it in co-op. And it's online. It's uh, local. Um, it's, you know, hand a controller to a friend sure. kind of thing. So it, there's a lot of options. Yeah, I think the only thing um, that I've heard so far, because I can know anything I want, but I'm trying to avoid some stuff. Right. Is, I was trying to look yeah. up, like, oh, how does the co-op and online work? And apparently you get, everyone has to play, like, an hour before you can even do it. And that, to um, me... That, that might be true. I, I mean, it well, probably wasn't true for you because so. you were already playing the game, <laughs> so then you're not going to notice. But I'm just like, yeah. that. that's a little strange. I did notice that there are certain things like about the customization that didn't unlock until a little later than you might have thought. Hmm. So it they they keep it coming. But yeah, mm-hmm. this is a game uh, I'm going to be picking up. So I oh I, I can't wait. I, well, I'm a big Marvel fan. This is yes. Although none of that and actually surprises me. They do such a great me. job with these characters because they they kind of go for the best looks. It's like oh, did they look really awesome in the movies? Well, then these characters look you know cooler, more towards the movie look. Did the movie characters not look quite as cool as they did in the comics? All right, well, these ones look more like they did in the <laughs> comics than they did in the movies kind of thing. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, I think they, they're doing a really great job. It's exactly the kind of thing that we wanted on Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Switch and I like that go, going through the Infinity Stone storyline again, which now the general public is well aware of. Mm-hmm. So Right. Absolutely. Pounding uh, Thanos into our minds, right? Right. Put him on the cover. Now you can know. I'm, I'm excited. I'm so like that's that's good because I mean like, mm-hmm. and it's got decent was, reviews, mid seventies. So, and when we're looking at the new Marvel movies that are coming out, they're treating these movies like comic books. I mean, this is going to go on forever, and people are actually going to know Marvel character lore, having never that's read great. a comic mm-hmm. book ever. That's so cool. I like that. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And especially now, because um, if you try to get into comic book now, you can be so far behind everything. <laughs> it could be really overwhelming. Yes, because there, there's I read comics when I was a kid, and then like I stopped for a while, and I, I, I uh, was looking up some the other day, and I'm just like, holy crud! I'd rather just watch the movies. <laughs> <laughs> there's just way too right. much going on. Yeah, I'm like in the Marvel universe is already crazy with all the multiverse stuff, and it's just like I, the movies are, are good. I'll just wait for the next yep. movie. <laughs> I thought the season of Spider Man. Ah. Man, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's good. Oh, I've heard good things. You yeah. haven't seen Spider Man? I know. Yet? The biggest revelation go. here we gotta go. is that I haven't oh, seen the far from We gotta go. Man. We gotta go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we gotta go. Right, right when the, we gotta wrap this podcast up. So get, get You're right. Feet. Um, uh, let's skip over to Eric just because it should be a pretty succinct one. <laughs> When's the last? What's the last video game you even played? <laughs> Breath of the Wild. When we were at E3. Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, you played it since? Oh. Oh, snap. Yeah, I've played it since, yeah. A little bit here and there. I mean, Breath of the Wild is a game that keeps on getting it. So. I had ten hour trip out to South Dakota. Oh, nice! I, it kind of needed something to do in the car. <laughs> I mean, well, now you have Ultimate Alliance soon, so then yeah, well, yeah, right, right. It'll be fun. Okay, so Breath of the Wild. Obviously, we know that one. Big mm. callback to the launch. Awesome mm. game. Yeah. Um, my favorite Zelda game of all time. Probably till Breath of the Wild too. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna start the Zelda combo now. Uh, HK, what have you been playing lately? <laughs> Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> As if that's a surprise. Is that Man, really? I mean, I, ca- okay, I can't put this game down. It's funny. Every time I boot it up, since you know how you could see your friends in the top corner of the Nintendo Switch, yep. every time you, I boot it up, and then like uh, my brother, for example, is like, oh, HMK is playing Breath of the Wild now. He calls me up and he's like, stop playing that game. You beat it. <laughs> and then I'm like, it's, it's, I, what are you talking about? You don't beat this game. It's, is like, it, it's over. Stop it. And I'm like, man, whatever. Is it more replayable for you than Kingdom Hearts 3? Oh, that's actually, it's Kingdom Hearts 3. I, I it, it was, it's a lot of give or take between that game and Kingdom Hearts 3, especially since Kingdom Hearts 3 has a, a critical mode out already. And yep. since the DLC should be coming out this winter. Uh, I've been yeah. Those are the two main games I've been playing around. I mean, like every I've been picking up other games here and there, playing a little bit of League of Legends, playing Splatoon nice. because of the whole uh, final Splat Splatfest that too. happened. Me yep. too. Uh, Spider Man because the Homecoming, the the Far From Home costumes <laughs> came out. Uh, you know, I've been playing a lot of games, but mostly the big focus like right now is Kingdom Hearts Three, Smash Bros, and uh, Breath of the Wild. But Breath of the Wild is like taking the cake, especially since boys E three. Breath of the Wild 2, baby! Oh, Heck yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Oh, have you seen my oh, my yeah. live reaction to that yet? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Oh. 
I think Dude, I had a heart I'm attack just, in the hotel room. I, I'm, I'm pretty just, sure. I'm looking all over the Breath of the Wild 1 for clues I can use to, like, you know, relate it to nice. Breath of the Wild 2 or Breath oh, of the Wild yeah. sequel, whatever one, anyone wants to, like, try and call it. And just so you know, for those who flame me for saying Breath of the Wild 2, Nintendo uses Breath of the Wild 2 as a tag in that video on YouTube. They do. So I don't want to hear it. Just Nintendo like people who, there are people yelling at me, like, oh, we don't know if it's a sequel. It says sequel. It does say sequel. In it text, does. in the it trailer. Does. How much yeah, How much more sequel. do you need it's than really, that? Yeah, like the sequel to Breath if of the Wild. If it was a prequel, it would say prequel. prequel. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anyways. You know, I, honestly, I don't blame them for like hey i mean there could be a people well i think it's just people want but, wanted want to well, know no about a certain can't period of time <laughs> like they want to go back to the past and see it and it's like yeah well that's not what they're doing it's too bad yeah everyone's dead let's move on let's <laughs> yeah. just, let's focus it's on like, the future it's like technically the true ending of breath of the wild is a little bit of a cliffhanger anyways oh yeah so no, you don't understand how happy i was in like so many different degrees for breath of the wild 2 specifically it's like this is the first Zelda game, and I'm wording this very specifically. This is the first Zelda game, which is a true and true blood through blood direct sequel to a Zelda game. Yes, I know we have Majora's Mask, which was a direct sequel to Ocarina of Time, but that took place in Termina. Yes, we had Phantom Hourglass, which was a direct sequel to The Wind Waker, but that took place in the new Great Sea of, uh, you know, the 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 Sea of the Wind. It's, it's kind of like when they were on their way to find the new Hyrule. Because the the yeah, at the end of the Wind Waker, they say they got to find a new Hyrule. So right. So this is the first time where we're actually going back to, to the, the same characters, <laughs> the same world, and same everything, but just it's going to be expanded, and I'm so excited for that, man. Uh, and the fact, yo, this game's been in development since 2017. This game is running on the same engine. They're using the same world, the same assets. Yo, man, 2020, dude. Don't. I, anyone's mm. like, it's not going to come out 2020. Just watch. And I'm going to shove those Pop Tarts in your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Can't tell. H2K yeah. really loves the Zelda. Yeah. Mm. I've been avoiding talking about Breath of the Wild 2 because I think I could rant about it for three hours. Easy. <laughs> like, I, I'm so excited for that game. Oh, yeah. I mean, not only am I like a big Zelda guy, and everyone at this at, at this podcast right now knows me from all my Zelda days. Man, oh my gosh, I could be doing. I, I'm still kind of surprised. The Zelda though. Inquiries podcast need yeah. to come back. Yeah, right. I know HMK will be there. He'll he'll be there oh, talking theories all day long. Let's do it. Get Jesse involved. Oh, game over Jesse too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he'd love to dive deep in some theories. I'm still <laughs> surprised that. Shut up, Doug Bowser wasn't memed. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> At the end of my reaction video, I was trying to process what I just saw, and here comes Doug Bowser on screen, and I'm like, "Shut up, Doug Bowser!" And I muted. <laughs> I'm like, "I don't want to hear you right now. Nobody wants to hear you." <laughs> right? I'm surprised I need that time wasn't to process memed. what just happened. <laughs> Golly. Oh man. Um. So for me, I uh been playing just mostly just Mario Maker. Uh, I got it for my birthday. Oh yeah. So. uh I've been Good just playing stuff. playing lots of Mario Maker. It's it's fun. Um, it's not like I'm not really into building games, so building my own levels doesn't really interest me that much. Uh, that's why I don't like Dragon Quest Builders that much or Minecraft or anything. But mm-hmm. um, playing other people's creations is always crazy and always fun. I did one live stream where I where I played people's creations and that was a lot of fun. I found out I'm not very good at Mario. You think you're good? <laughs> <laughs> not very good. <laughs> yeah. um, if you play one of Robert Ross's levels, and then you'll know how good you oh, are. Oh, yeah! One yeah. of the best levels I'd played so far was uh, somebody recreating the um, Great Deku Tree from Ocarina. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I played that one too. I love oh, that one. Yeah. That one was, it was really good. so well done. Yeah, yeah, I, and, and I like ones like that sometimes where it's not necessarily difficult because well, I don't. I'm not very good at Mario, so <laughs> that's good. But the theme, and they do that theme so well. I mm-hmm. really like ones like that, um, and I'm always impressed by people that also can make like the auto music playing ones. I always think those ones are kind of neat too, just because like, hey, it took a lot of ingenuity to make that work just right. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, what I like in this one, uh, what I'm finding, I actually like lots of story mode. Um, yeah. I didn't think I, I thought it was just gonna be like this throwaway thing, you know? I whatever. This isn't a normal Mario game. It's not gonna be. The, it's gonna not gonna matter. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm just playing. Like I just bought the next new Super Mario Brothers U game. It just feels like that's yeah. what I, I. I just I got a new Mario game, hundred levels. The story is just as deep as any other Mario game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yep. it's kind of it's kind of neat. I'm just deep. like it's kind of like you got a Mario game within a Mario game, and I, 
I'm shocked at how how much I'm enjoying it. I like uh, because it is neat seeing all these Nintendo design levels where they're doing things they wouldn't do in Mario games normally because of the tool yeah. set. Uh, and I think that's kind of cool because they're like, you know, none of it's like, you know, I'm not going to say all these levels are as good as the user created ones before Nintendo levels. Some of them, especially when you get deeper into it, it's like, okay, Nintendo is, uh, is getting their creativity on here. This is pretty cool. Um, and I, I just, I, I really like it. I worry that there might not be another 2d side scrolling Mario game for quite some time because there hasn't really been a new one since you deluxe. So, or I since you really, because Deluxe is just a re-release. You need to drop the whole new business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, just be happy to then call it the new Switch. Yeah. There's still a chance. <laughs> right. if, a, if, if a Switch Pro is a thing, they might call that a yeah, new right. Nintendo Switch. So. New Switch just XL. Right, right. Oh, boy. Oh, I actually <laughs> did forget a game I was playing. Well, what's that? And that actually really fits into well... I picked back up ukulele, and I have no freaking clue what the hell I'm <laughs> what I'm doing. That's what happens. That's what happens in ukulele. I set it down and went. Uh, okay, yeah, what am I doing? In a while, you guys, have you guys ever had that happen? Like where you just haven't played a game in a while, but you never beat it. So then you pick it back up, and you're like, uh, crap. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? Every RPG. Ever. Every RPG ever. <laughs> Every yeah. RPG ever. <laughs> Every RPG ever. <laughs> Oh, 40 yeah. hours in, like RPGs, put it down for two weeks, come back and go. Well, I have, they to, have to start over I now. Can't, I, I, don't, I won't even start an RPG unless I'm willing to like play and finish it because I know I'm going to be mad at myself if I come back to it. Um, that happened to me with The Witcher 3, and that's why I still haven't beaten mm. the DLC and stuff because I stopped playing and I came back and I couldn't remember anything. I'm like, ugh. Now they have, now they have, now, and now there's a Witcher Netflix series coming out, and that's going to throw me for a loop. <laughs> that's going to be based off the books and not the games. No oh, boy. Uh, well, it's okay though, because now The Witcher's coming to Switch. Yes. Mm. Yes. Oh, I'm excited about that. Oh, yeah. Switcher three. Switcher three, baby. All right. Um, I guess we're getting to the next topic here. Second to last topics. Uh, this one is actually just what's our most anticipated Switch game the rest of the year and why? Let's shoot it over. Let's go, Eric first. Hmm. I think it's a tie between two games. What's that? Luigi's Mansion three, and the oddball out of everybody probably. Is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles remastered? Remastered. Ah. remastered. Okay, gotcha. because nice. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, your excitement for that would be like mine for Link's Awakening. So yeah, the remaster of a game from our childhood. Yeah. So yeah, that we played the, 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 play the crap, crap out of played the crap out of Crystal Chronicles. Uh, not the Wii one. Should have yeah. never existed. GameCube one. That should or GameCube whatever it was. Yeah, no, yeah, the GameCube one is the is the actual like Crystal Chronicles character. Yeah. You have a pot bitch. And yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. That game. A lot of people hated it. But I GBA it. one or something too, right? And they would connect together. Yep, yeah, that, yep. yep. You had the uh, GameCube with the uh, GBA yeah. connection links. connection if links. you want to do multiplayer. I recommend the SPs, but well, obviously, <laughs> no. Use the ones with Delta back of the screen and make sure you're in a dimly lit room. Yes. <laughs> yes. Ideal. Oh man, peel through peel through batteries on that game like crazy too. On the let me use the original GBA, not uh-huh. the recharger one. Um, uh-huh. Okay, cool. Uh, I already know your reason for a Crystal Chronicles childhood game. Uh, why Luigi's Mansion Three? Uh, after playing it at E three, yeah. It well, what what me. what about it is, is like exciting? Please tell me it plays more like the first and not like the second. I, I honestly have not actually played the first, so oh. I know, I know. I know. So I can't answer that question. Do you know? Apparently not because you haven't played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I can't answer that question. But, yeah. I mean, it, it felt real nice. It, it, it It's great. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It was a lot of fun. That I do know. Yes. Yes. And I like the plunger. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like the plunger. Yes. <laughs> um, HMK. What's your most anticipated Switch game the rest of the year? <sighs> you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Nah, I'm not saying that's my game. That's my most anticipated game because I mean, yeah, sure, Link's Awakening. Because I mean, I'm a Zelda fan. <laughs> I'm actually really, really looking forward to it now after seeing um, the E3 reveals, especially you know Dungeon Maker. Yeah, I'm dumb excited for that. But and I know, played Link's Awakening at E3, so yeah. Oh, it's so uh, good. It's so good. What was I gonna say? If it, if it was if it okay, 
Link's Awakening is obviously me because you know Zelda guy. Yeah. But if I if I'm not counting Link's Awakening, I I honestly think Luigi's Mansion Three. I'm stupid excited for that mm-hmm. game. You know, because I played the first and the first was so good, and then the second was it was good, but it was weird. I'm like, yo, it's like Luigi's Mansion, but not really. Like it's like like okay, L- Luigi's Mansion One is like a Coca Cola. And then Luigi's Mansion 2 is like an RC cola. Uh-huh. And I'm like, it's okay, yeah, sure, it's cola, but it ain't, it ain't, de- it definitely ain't no Coca Cola. But it I'm lost its personality. Yeah. So, so this is what I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited for Luigi's Mansion 3 from what, from what I've been hearing, what I've been seeing. It seems to be a lot more similar to the first. All of the multiplayer aspects, the online, gu- the whole, uh, you Gooigi. know, concept of Gooigi. Gooigi coming back and stuff. I'm actually really, really, Really excited for Luigi's Mansion 3. So, if we're not counting Link's Awakening, Luigi's Mansion 3 is definitely my most anticipated uh, game for the Switch this year. Awesome. What do you got, 5J? Well, we're hearing a lot of that, but Luigi's Mansion 3 is definitely one of them. And the other one for me is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, so, I like when Pokemon takes a step forward, not necessarily, you know, conceptually, because it seems like a pretty straightforward, average Pokemon game, but it's the first time getting a real. You know, home console, full release. I really like the look of the new uh, kingdom, the Galar region. So I'm looking forward to exploring that. Um, I don't know, it just looks like it's going to be a fun time. You know, being able to play it on the TV or portable, you know. It's a simple selling point on many Switch games, but it's effective for me. So I'm really looking forward to that. And Luigi's Mansion, I love them both. I think they're both awesome games. Uh, there was a lot of gameplay improvements in Luigi's Mansion 2 that I appreciated, like, you know, actually being able to move a little faster. Uh, yeah, it was 3DS, so there were also some downgrades, but uh, things like, you know, the mansions were really short segments and they kept sucking you back in and out. But the gameplay that was there was great. They added new mechanics and all of it worked really well. And I'm excited to essentially have them do that without all the segmenting, you know. Give me a big full mansion and don't suck me out every... 10 minutes and then it's going to be the strengths of luigi's mansion 2 without the weaknesses of it and hopefully we get that mario button back so he can just <laughs> pitifully call out for his brother the mario. whole game yeah one of the most random but fun parts and he's just like awkwardly humming the music i mean right. just fun little touches like that plus i'm a huge ghostbusters guy so anything remotely ghostbusters like i gotta have it <laughs> so um, I mean, might as well just call this the Luigi's Mansion 3 topic. <laughs> yeah. My, I mean, we might as well. I, I said it during E3. I think, for me, personally, this has Game of the Year potential. I understand it's not yes. going to actually win a Game of the Year award. Or I be can, nominated. Um, I mean, it might win a award at, like, the Game like Awards or something. family game or yeah. something. But it, but it won't, won't win Game of the Year. It's just not. I mean, I, I honestly think things like Fire Emblem, Astral Chain, those kinds of things are going to end up being higher reviewed anyways than this game. But mm-hmm. when it comes to your personal game of the year, it's all about what you like. And I played a ton of games at E3. Uh, almost all of the Switch games coming out I've touched at some point besides Astral Chain and Fire Emblem. And I got to say, Luigi's Mansion 3, as someone who has extensively played the, the prior two games, is everything I wanted out of an actual return to home consoles. Now, there's nice. some things that I can argue maybe... Could be a little different, like the, like it could be a little darker in some of the rooms. Um, that's just an aesthetic choice they made to make things a bit more visible. Uh, but I mean, they have all the hidden stuff is back and hidden very cleverly in in the area we got to play. Mm-hmm. Um, one of nice. one of the things that was hidden in particular was actually pretty difficult to figure out. Um, yeah. Not obvious yeah. at no. all, and I love it. Like it's obvious <laughs> there's something there, but what? How do you get to it? Was not right, obvious, yeah. and I love that. That there's actually because I didn't feel that in Dark Moon. It just felt sure. pretty, pretty stock standard, pretty easy. It, it was kind of like the first game, but on the easy level track. It, it seemed sure. relatively straightforward. Yeah, there and wasn't... and and the second one, Dark Moon didn't have personality. Um, the ghosts mm. in particular stand out in Dark Moon. Is like they're all the same ghost, and mm. that wasn't great. In this game, just in this alone, we <laughs> saw ghost? at least I think at least three different types of ghosts in one area mm-hmm. uh now yeah obviously you have like the same type that's having different weapons that's a thing too but um oh, yeah. there was like different like the ghosts had, had more personalities i mean king boo we saw in one trailer's back 
Uh, there, there's yes. just a lot of. Well, it seems like there's a lot more personality injected into this game, and maybe it was limited by 3ds at the time, and it, it was next level oh, yeah. games. Next level games didn't do the first one, so it was their first Luigi's Mansion ever. Um, I'm still disappointed that Luigi's Mansion was ported to 3ds and not Switch, but that's a story yes. for another day. Yeah, but oh, Luigi's the controls Mansion, were so bad on it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, not good at all. Like it's it, to me, it's a downgrade in every way. Like if that's yeah. the only way you have to play it, fine, but uh, don't. <laughs> just, just, just wait for Luigi's Mansion Three on Switch. But the birth of Gooigi, though. So <sighs> thanks for that. And and uh, like what I really love too is you know because yeah we got, we got our demo we got to play and I played through it twice and mm-hmm. it's really cool. Um, every I mean even even the boss fight's really interesting. Uh, I do I can see how some people are gonna get sick of the slam mechanic where you slam the ghost all the it's time. It's optional, but it is what? optional. I, I thought that was gonna be fun. It is fun. It, it is, is fun. fun. But. As I was playing through the second time, I was like, okay, I've slammed like 50 of these things. Yeah. At some point, it's kind of like, okay, is there any other way to get the ghost? Yes, there is. You don't yeah, have, no, you do not no. have to slam. No. Slamming By the is way, optional. torn straight out of the Ghostbusters video game, which is also coming yes, to Switch this yes. year, remastered. Yes, it is. So it, it feels fun, but I'm thankful it's optional. So if you don't feel like doing it, you don't have to. You can actually, you know, do your pulling back on the stick and actually have to put it's, some more it's a lot of catching them. It's a lot of fun for like the first ghost in a room because there's like, four or five other ghosts in the room and you can just sit there and swing the ghost around smoke all the other ones and then, <laughs> yeah, and then awesome. once, once you're the last one and all oh, that's it's the only one left you're like well I'm just banging you against the yeah. floor and um, okay sure yeah I mean it, I don't think it's a bad mechanic it's just it, I could definitely see that it, it's going to be the go to for everyone playing because it, mm. it from what I could tell it appears with every ghost you suck oh. up there hasn't been a ghost I sucked right. up yet that you couldn't do it to. and it's relatively easy to do so yeah, it's, it's literally sure. and there's a button prompt for it yeah. so like it's it's going to be a go-to move, and I don't mind the move. I wish there wasn't a button prompt. That I, I wish they would have got rid of the prompt and made it where, yeah, you can do it every time, but no, it's skill-based. You need to recognize when it's time to slam. And if you right. hit it wrong, the ghost it, gets free. And maybe, that, maybe the, Then there'd be some risk-reward to, to it is possible it. that It is possible that it is a demo thing. I don't think so. Or a first-level thing. No. Knowing we'll Nintendo. We'll find out. Knowing, is, yeah, you're right. You're not, probably right. This is how Next Level Games does things. Yeah, Anyways, right. but... It doesn't matter. Like I still think it's cool, and I know subconsciously now it's optional, so I'll just not hit the button if I don't want to. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of hidden rooms and hidden compartments just in the one area we got to play. Plus, I was a sucker because it was medieval themed, yeah, and right. that's like one of my oh, favorite sweet. themes yeah. or anything. Hello, why do you think I like Zelda so much? That's what got me into it: yep. castles and knights yep. and princesses. Uh, so it was just really cool. Um, and God, the, I mean, the, the jousting boss yeah, at the right, end, oh, right. that was a blast both times. I have no yep. complaints about that boss. That boss was fantastic. Um, the only pro- the only complaint that I had was aiming was a little bit with the plunger, a little bit tough, especially on the diagonals. See, I didn't have an issue mm. aiming because like, you were having an issue with the flashlight even on that boss. Yeah, um, I never had an issue with that. The plunger, I had an issue at times aiming. Second time around, I had no issues though. I never had yeah. an issue with the flashlight I, though, but. I don't know. I, I just had I had it could be problems on, on the yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they, they were played so much. Yeah, no. Um, I had I had problems on the on the the angles. Okay. If it wasn't a cardinal direction, I had that's when I had the that's when I had the problems. And on the boss fight, there are times when you're in not necessarily a perfect cardinal direction to to hit him with the flash. It, it ended up not being a problem. The first time around, that bothered me. Second time around, it didn't. I don't know. We'll see how it works in the final game, but it didn't stop you from being excited about it. No. Uh, I do like that it's a return to one building. I get, guys, it's a hotel. It's not a mansion. I understand. But <laughs> yeah. I don't mind the change in locale in this case. Um, I yeah. think I think it actually fits with the game. So. Mm-hmm. Um, and fits with the Ghostbusters theme. So and and, and, and <laughs> apparently each like floor <laughs> of the game is going to be like its own unique theme. And I'm like, oh, so it's like a themed hotel. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So it kind of fits with hey. the hotel thing, and it fits with the unique nature of creating new themes for Perfect. all the time. So. As long as they bring the bellhops from E3, <laughs> oh, we're geez. good. The bellhops <laughs> Those guys E3 were awesome. freaking awesome. Yeah, the, the game's worth buying just, just for yeah, them. Yeah, right. Any, um, any other game that you're the, excited for? That I'm excited for? I yeah. mean, you might as well just list every game coming well, to Switch. Yeah, there's that. I mean, we're talking to indie games. That's rad. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. You know? Um, that's just the first time I pass my mind because I'm really looking forward to it. Pine comes out next month. That one looks very interesting. Uh, so, I mean, there's... Is, is there a game... I think a better question, is there a game coming on Switch I don't want? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the answer right now is at least all the exclusives I want. Uh, I'm, I almost don't want to get NBA 2K20 on principle. 
just to kind of boycott the microtransactions and how they're ruining the single player. Yeah. Oh. And it doesn't have Giannis on the cover. But I can't help because now the Bucks are legit good, and how can I not buy a sports game when the Bucks, my, in my entire life, I've been waiting to be this right. good, and now they're good. Right. How can I not buy the game? Right. I mean, yeah, Giannis isn't on the cover this time, but now it's like, yeah, but now my team's actually good. Yeah. So now there like when that. I play online, I can actually compete with all the elite teams. I don't have to worry about, oh, I'm facing against LeBron or I'm facing the Golden State Warriors. It don't matter. My team's just as good. Yeah. Let's go. Ah. Uh, so I'll probably, I already know I'm probably already going to cave. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. Um, all right. Uh, quick on the last one here. Uh, the very last topic is just basically, is there anything you guys want to bring up and briefly talk about before the, the cast is over here? Well, I already kind of did because... Yeah, I knew you couldn't wait. The, the wild. You mentioned Zelda earlier, and I'm like, he's not going to wait till the end. He yeah. can't wait. Of course, of course, man, of course. <laughs> Surprised he didn't shout it out at the beginning and just yeah. t- make it a Zelda cast. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a guest. Respecting the process, respecting the process. Yeah. yeah, but if you have me on your channel, uh, it will be just Zelda all the time. Oh, yeah. I can't talk much about Kingdom Hearts 3 because I haven't played it yet, but I can talk the hell out of Zelda. Play it. I know, okay? Don't remind me. I'm trying to hold off until the, the next PlayStation comes out, but anyways, uh, next PlayStation, uh, PlayStation Five. I don't own PlayStation Four, so I'm going to pick up PlayStation Five and then then go back and play all the back catalog. So perfect. That's my plan, anyways. We'll see. I say that and then I'll skip it because the new Kingdom Hearts will come. I shouldn't say that. It takes so long for Kingdom Hearts <laughs> games to come out. I really shouldn't. It, say might, it might be. A, it might be. A, what do you call it? Uh, what you call it? It might be a bit sooner. Oh, don't tell me this. Don't tell Could me. Could be things. a spin-off game. Oh yeah, they do those. those come out do, all the time. They do those a lot. Yeah, I mean those are the ones we were getting like on 3ds and stuff too. Um, <laughs> right. Five J. Is there anything else you want to bring up before we're we're out of here? I mean, it's just simple topics. I don't know if there's anything sure. that came up with that really had a lot of meat. It on doesn't the have bones. to have a lot of meat. We're we're towards the end here. It's all right. Well, so uh, we've seen Nintendo make some new decisions this generation. Um. And one of the things that I've been thinking about is, is Nintendo actually ever going to make a more powerful Switch? Because I'm not sure that they will at this point. And what happens if they don't? What do you What do you guys think? Are they going to have a more powerful Switch coming out? I don't know if we'll get a Switch Pro. would you care if they didn't? Like, I assume you're talking about Switch Pro or something like that. Right, like actually adding more like CPU power, more yeah. processing power. We're not talking about like battery improvements or yeah. screen updates or whatever. I mean, actually Super Level Day will get powerful. mad at me. But I'm almost starting to lean towards, I'm not sure we're going to get a Switch Pro. Mm -hmm. I think it's more likely we get a Switch 2 in like two or three years. And that's the more powerful system. It's fully backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah. It it, it still be the same family of systems, but they would consider this like their new iPhone kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, Yeah, like 3DS, completely and totally backwards compatible. With DS, yep. Yep. And that's what I kind of think at this point will happen. But... I'm a sucker. I want. I want it to be real. I want it to come out. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'll pick it up. I love tech. And you're gonna tell me Breath of the Wild full 1080p all the time. I'm there. <laughs> yeah, but they've just shown so much restraint with hardware this time around. You know, normally every year we get where, and it's and, been two years before we finally got the Switch Lite, and that's kind of a. It's not an upgrade. It's definitely not well, an upgrade. Here's no. the thing, though. I'm curious because. If the Switch Lite and if the revised Switch are using the shrunk down Taker X1s, which seem to be being inferred, that could leave headroom for them to just add a boost mode to those later that would be what a Pro is. Maybe, but then, uh, like for a Switch Lite at least, I don't know if it's meant to have the kind of airflow needed to handle it. Yeah, I don't know if there's a fan in it. That's kind of yeah. my big thing is I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fanless. They're going to put a big fan in the new dock, and that's what's going to cool it down. <laughs> there we go. There we go. He's, he's like going, jet turning on. He, he, he's right. going straight up. We are going to get a new Switch. What we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get a more powerful dock. <laughs> you, you set your Switch yes. in the dock, and all of a sudden your dock just takes off across your table. You're like, uh, <laughs> wait, come back here. <laughs> it, it, you, jet engine. That's not what I meant by portable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 4K dock it up. I, I, I would love that, but mm-hmm. it's, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And Nintendo's not all about that power life to go that far. A more powerful, like a new 3DS, possible. Because mm-hmm. they've done it. They've done yeah, it. they've done it, but, um, but they're just seeming to make different choices this time around. So I'm Well, it also helps curious. that like when they did it with the 3DS, um, 
I don't think the 3DS was as popular as the Switch was this far in no. the life cycle. So, no. so while 3DS was huge, by the time new 3DS come out, it kind of felt like, well, maybe we need to keep invigorating people to keep buying the thing. But like, we're getting these revisions right now, the Switch Lite and the new one, at a time when the Switch is selling like gangbusters. They don't need a boost in sales. Right. But... The light, I said, makes sense earlier if you think about it more as it's a 3DS replacement yeah. than a Switch replacement. Yeah. Okay, fine. I get that, especially for parents looking for a cheaper thing at the holidays because, hey, if you're not willing to drop the price of the Switch this holiday, hey, look, we just have a cheaper version. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's going to sell like crazy with Pokemon, right. Link's Awakening. Yeah. I think those two games in particular are really going to push that. Cause those are gonna I suppose if you think about it more like their console line, they typically didn't do updates to the console like yeah maybe they removed a they, they did a, revisions like it just usually like wasn't a, more power that's what i mean yeah. that's what i mean they didn't make them more powerful yeah like there was a wii mini that came out like Say five that. years in the life cycle but I it was mean, like a cheap disc version. drives and other things in the past so yeah, they yeah. technically done the more power but it, <laughs> Not at a mass level. Not at a mass level. Right. It's not. Level. It's not standard for the console line. Yeah. It's more the portables where they did that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see uh, what if anything they do. Eric, you got any thoughts on it? Nope. No. Blank. No. Yeah. How about you, Jim? Okay. <laughs> he's he's already playing Zelda. He's already, he's already up <laughs> right. on that man. He's too busy thinking <laughs> yeah. about his next theory video. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm just pretty much like, nodding. Good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Cool. Awesome. That's all right. We're, we're at the end of the cast anyways. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining. Obviously, HMK, thank you so much for coming on. We're going to have to have you on more often, man. You're awesome oh, guest. definitely. Yo, just Especially when up. we got some more Zelda topics. Oh, I know you're all over that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm hoping I'm hoping we hear more at like, the Game Awards or something. Come on. The Game Awards, yeah. Keep oh, your eyes peeled for that. Oh, they did it in the past with Zelda. Let's go. Let's go. Um, and uh, so thank you so much. Do you have uh, any upcoming content or anything you want to let people know about? Uh, definitely, I have so, a bunch of awesome uh, Zelda collaborations that are coming on up, including some hearts collaborations, but I just really want to focus a lot more on like the broad scope of Nintendo Switch. I have some really cool Smash Bros. ideas, but I've released a huge Zelda uh, theory just now called uh, Zelda is the Cause of Hyrule's Downfall, which breaks down the possible return of the Triforce in Breath of the Wild 2 in a very sinister way. So you should guys definitely check it out on my channel it's over really at HMK. Wow. It's really good. I've already, I've already watched it. I won't spoil it for anyone, but it's really good. Um, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, so you're expanding your channel a bit now? Oh, definitely, yeah. Because he was always known, at least in my world, as the Kingdom Hearts Zelda guy. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that that's not going to change. I just want to, you know, You just want to add some more, more to... stuff. Yeah, it, well, like, it, it also is good. Smash Brothers, Nintendo Switch, maybe some Yu-Gi-Oh. Sure. So, no, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like, I went from being just a Zelda guy to I do everything now. So it's definitely nice having a wider variety mm-hmm. of stuff to talk about. But you could definitely tell, like, if you can't tell with my reaction to your E3, when something Zelda happens, <laughs> it's at a whole new level for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, yeah. Like, guys, I, I, I am unabashed in my extreme bias to Zelda and how much it matters to me. I could talk about how much Luigi's Mansion is fantastic. I could talk about, oh, I, I got 50 games on my Switch. I could talk about how amazing all these games are. But you mentioned Zelda, and it's over. There's no conversation to be had. It's Zelda, and then everything else is below it. And it's not even close. Yeah. I say that. There's some. There's other franchises I actually like just as much. But um, I don't know what it is about Zelda, man. Maybe it's just because I covered it for 20 years. So I kind of yeah. trained my brain that you need to care more about it. <laughs> but I, can't, I feel you. Uh, I can't help it, man. I there's Back in the day when I used to do tons of th- I wish I was a YouTuber back then when I was doing all those theories. That's what I should have been doing instead of running a website. Way to go. <sighs> you could have been a YouTuber before it was cool. I know. I could have been a YouTuber. I could have got bigger than HMK before anyone knew who HMK was. <laughs> <laughs> I was pushing HMK's videos at Zelda Informer back in the day. <laughs> Yo, and I appreciate that. Yeah, you. Uh, I pushed some game over Jesse. Uh, who else? There was a bunch of people. Commonwealth Realm. Yeah, Conrad, Dime, Ed, uh, McElroy Dime. back when he used to do things. He's back. I'm oh, is, sure. is he back now? Yeah, I know he, he left I, for a I, I'm while. pretty sure he just dropped re- recently a theory on the Kokiri. Okay, it's just not popping up in my sub feed. I'll have to. Well, thanks, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you might, have to, thanks, might want to make sure you're still subbed. <laughs> yeah, fit it on sub me. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. I remember the Chamber of Sages. Oh, anyways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get, getting back in the day. All right, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, obviously, thank you, 5J. Welcome to the Tunnel Podcast, man. Every week, it's going to yeah. be awesome, right? We're going to have a lot of fun. 
great to have be back here again having these awesome discussions. It was great yeah. to be talking with HMK. Um, and I can and I can I haven't told Five J that yet this, so you're gonna find out right now. Um, <laughs> I'm actually uh, one thing we're gonna do with this podcast, guys, in the future is. Uh, this podcast, I, I came up with basically all the topics uh, just because it was the first one back and I wanted to kind of make it more controlled for my my sake. But what I'm going to be doing in the future, and I've already talked to some patrons about this, is I'm going to be letting like people like 5J come up with some topics. We're, we're looking at like seven to ten topics a week. So having 5J come up with some and then like run them by me and kind of figure out, okay, what, what what's going to make a good discussion? Um, so we have like a week to come up with those topics instead of always waiting to the last minute. <laughs> Um, and also we have patrons that can come on. I didn't mention it today, uh, but we do have a patron at patreon.com slash Nintendo prime. And if you get in the $20 tier on that, you can come on one, one podcast per month. And the people that come on will also be encouraged to pick out some topics. So they want, they get to talk about the things they want to talk about. Um, I also nice. want to make it in the future where usually I did this in the past when I had special guests on like HMK, uh, that I know, okay, I know what he's into. We'll talk about this, but this time around, I'm kind of waiting because I know, I'm going to have a big Breath of the Wild 2 huge like podcasting happening later this year. Uh, HMK, don't what? worry, you'll be invited. <laughs> you'll be invited. I'm get. I'm going to try to get all the old crew together. It's it, it's going to be huge. Um, but I wanted to wait, and I didn't want to wait that long to get HMK on because it's been forever. We needed to touch base again. So, um, all right, let's go do it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, oh, I guess I have one lesson to mention. We did move the podcast, uh, the audio version. It's no longer on Podbean. If you are someone who followed us on Podbean, please don't go down to the description and go to the new anchor.fm URL. That's now where it's located. If you are on iTunes or Google Play, don't worry. The podcast will still be there like always. That was just an RSS feed change for that. But all right, cool. I think that's finally it. And Nintendo Prime <laughs> uh, New Eric. I didn't bring up all the other places of no, that. No. But no, I know. I know. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next podcast.